Hello everyone, welcome to this beautiful park in the middle of Shanghai, China. My name is Antonio and today I'm talking to one of my good friends here in China. His name is Pascal, he's from Switzerland. And actually we had an interesting conversation. We were working together some time ago. And then uh, we're going to be talking about different things, about perceptions of uh, Swiss people, European people, when it comes to the culture of China and how uh, people that has been living in these uh, specific expat communities, sometimes they get to work together, um, different positions, different jobs, different things. So probably you'll enjoy. In case we have uh, another opportunity to sit together, maybe to discuss other topics, uh, we'll do that. Okay, so enjoy. See you next time. Well, welcome to this beautiful day in Shanghai, China. <laughs> Almost raining. But yeah, yeah, it's actually about to rain, but it was very nice a couple of hours ago. Yeah, so I'm here today with my friend Pascal, Pascal Schock. Hey, nice to meet you guys. Uh, he's from Switzerland. Actually, we were working together some years ago, 2016. And then, uh, so we were working in this hospitality management school. Yeah. Uh, and then that's where we met and then we've been living here in Shanghai, well in China for the last, in my case, 10 years and in your case? Same, 10 years. 10 years. <laughs> so we're gonna go, uh, you know, just explaining or actually just saying a little bit about experience of, uh, in your case, someone that is coming from a European background and you being Swiss and then what kind of like comparisons you've seen with the China and then things that you like, things that you don't like, your visa, your work. Uh, maybe some recommendations for people that want to come and work in China at some mm -hmm. point. Mm -hmm. And then just different things and topics. Uh, but first, cheers. Cheers. <laughs> cheers to good you. Day. To you. Oh, good to see you. Today we're not working together anymore. Uh, so we just uh, catch up like once in a while, right? Yeah. Okay, so tell us please a little bit about your background before you came to China. What were you doing uh, in Switzerland? Uh, how do you hear from China for the first time? Or yeah. what's a little bit of a background? Well, uh, I mean, my background is like fully hospitality. I worked in hospitality in Switzerland and then in China I started to work in hospitality and then where we met also was kind of a hospitality school. Yeah. yeah. So the whole background is kind of uh, within hospitality, right? Okay, so that's yeah. what you would uh, So you study that in Switzerland? Yeah, yeah, in Zurich. In Zurich, yeah. Okay. And you are from where? Well, from I'm Zurich? all the way from the south of uh, of Switzerland, uh -huh. from, like near the near a like tourist destination called Zermatt. Zermatt. Oh yeah, I've heard. Uh, beautiful scenery, no? Like for very skiing nice. with the Matterhorn and like famous mountains. Yeah, almost like the nice. scenery of uh, of Beijing. <laughs> <laughs> no, because a lot of people come here for actually um, skiing. That's in North Beijing. 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 Yeah, I did that last uh, last winter. It's not the best, right? But yeah. what I've heard is like here in China, <laughs> there's up north there's a station is called Qingling. Oh, maybe, maybe. Yeah, Qingling and uh, people who want to go and uh, do some yeah, skiing. There are some places, China. yeah, it's true, it's true. But maybe nothing comparable to Switzerland, right? Coming from a No Swiss. comments here. <laughs> <laughs> Diplomatic first, yeah. as usual. Yeah, exactly, yeah, very that's neutral the was gonna be that. Okay, so you were there, uh, that's your background. I think you were working, you were living as well in the in the US for some yeah, time, right? Yeah, in Kentucky. In Kentucky. I, but I, I mean, I was very young at that time. Say hi to your friends from Kentucky. <laughs> in case uh, somebody is listening. Someone is actually yeah, there. If you're listening, then please comment. Kentucky VPN. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. So you were there uh, for how long? Uh, three years. Three but years. But that was, I mean, that was back in 1996 to 99. Okay. So I was just like a kid at that time. A kid, so, yeah. From a high school. No, no, <laughs> like elementary school. <laughs> elementary school. Yeah. Okay, so you were there and then, uh, but you never knew about China, right? So and Yeah, it, w it was never really a big topic. Okay. Like also like in my family or like from my surrounding, it was never really a big, a big topic going okay. to China or living in China or anything. So you were there for three years uh, and then you were back in uh, Switzerland to study yeah, hospitality study management hospitality, in Zurich. Yeah. And then how did you decide to come to China in the first place? I mean, it was really just like, it was just like a, an idea that I had because I just wanted to do something else. Uh -huh. I know that, I, or I knew that I was interested in Asia to some extent. I wanted to discover Asia a little bit. I like to travel there when I was also in high school with friends and stuff, I, I kind of traveled there. And uh, so I kind of, I enjoyed, you know, Asia. But China again, 
I just chose it because I just wanted to do something else. I didn't want to go work in Thailand at that time. Yeah. And I didn't want to go to Bali and like, you know, yeah, the yeah. typical destinations. Right. I just wanted to, you know, discover a bit something else. So that was 2000 and what? 2014. Uh, 13, 14. 14. Yeah. I arrived in China, I think May, April or May 2014. Okay, so at that time, China was uh, going through Cheers, a lot of transition. Cheers. <laughs> at the end of this conversation, let's see how many years we have. <laughs> <laughs> so at that time, I think many people refer to what it was used to be called the wild, wild west of China, like 2013, yeah. 14, I mean, at that or time, even before course. maybe, right? I think so. I think the whole thing started back in 2001, right? When yeah. they joined the WTO and then yeah, kind of China started to open up a little bit. Well, not a little bit, but like yeah. severely right yeah and then uh, yeah so it took a bit of time of course to kind of get that economy growing but then by 2013 i mean it was it was really very fast growing yeah it so was the years where china was growing at like 10 percent a year yeah like it was that. always like i remember saying like double digit china double, double digit, digit double digit exactly. Every, everything for, was for double many digit, years right yeah. Yeah, when uh, normally the growth of the GDP per country, well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like 5%, 6%, yeah, even or not, something. Yeah, even, even China less, right? or other no, countries? No, other countries. Even no, less, I mean, like, Europe probably. didn't grow like 1-2% sometimes, yeah. right? Because so. <laughs> they're already developed, not much yeah. room to grow. Well, yeah. as some people would say. Okay, so you were there, <laughs> so you came here, so you were first working in... Where? Xi'an, my Xi first, An. first time flying to China was Xi'an. That's yeah. the place of the terracotta warriors. Right, all the way in the northwest of China. North, yeah. east, west, North okay, northwest west, yeah. of China. Yeah, exactly. Right. Terracotta warriors are famous. Yeah. Okay, so you were working there for how long? Around half a year. Half a year. Yeah, I was working for Sheraton there. Sheraton, okay. Yeah. So you were always, okay, yeah, so that's your background, yeah, right? So like hospitality, the thing, my, yeah, the Sheraton. Whole. What were you doing there in Sheraton? Uh, I was like a club launch manager there. Did they hire you when you were in Switzerland? Yeah. Because and with the whole China visa then? thing, I mean, it was a bit tricky at that time because, I mean, I think we're going to talk about that later, but the uh -huh. whole visa process obviously is very difficult. So I had to have the job and the visa already when I was in Switzerland to actually come to China. Okay, because what I've heard sometimes is like they offer different jobs to people, right? So they say, just come to China, maybe come with a tourist visa or a student visa. And then once you're here, then yeah. we're gonna, you know, like uh, give you a letter or whatever to change the visas. Yeah, but as being Swiss, I was very scared of doing <laughs> anything like that. <laughs> yeah, of so course. So I was like, I was very German at that, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. for that point. Like everything needs, needs to, to be, be like organized. By the book. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. exactly. Like and then I remember I've been coming uh, maybe two, three different times and I've been coming, well, I've been arriving in China in different visas. Yeah, so yeah. did you do like the student, student did, visa? Or yeah, like I did the tourist, the tourist visa. and then tourist to student and then student yeah. changed to, to work, to work visa. visa and that's when we, when we were working Some there in the rush. Yeah. Okay, well, so, so that's good. So you said, okay, so you just fix my visa, then I go to the Xi'an, I yeah, work and, there. And like you said, they didn't want to do that because it was like very difficult. So oh, they, they, actually, want to do that. they actually asked me to do it via a tourist visa, then just come there and then we're going to do it. Oh, and really? Stuff. Yeah. But then yeah, I didn't yeah. want to do it. So it was a bit of a struggle, obviously. But eventually they kind of agreed. Yeah. And then things, things kind of worked out well. Also because probably they don't want to spend in advance, right? So imagine that they are going through the process of visa and then at the yeah. end the person would say, no, actually I don't want. Yeah, probably so also, right? They also yeah. want, just they just want you to come and then fix it here. Yeah, and, they, okay. and I think it's also much more paperwork for them to do. Yeah. If they really hire somebody, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was with, uh, what, Marriott? No. Yeah. Marriott. I mean, I mean nowadays it's, it's Marriott, but at that time it was still Starwood. Starwood. Yeah, but then uh, kind of Starwood yeah. got bought out by Marriott a few years back. Okay. So now it's all Marriott. So, so then, okay, so after six months, uh, you change jobs? Yeah, what I went you? to Sanya. Sanya. So right, that's right. a good thing, obviously, working in one of those hotel chains. Tell us is where that, is Sanya. Yes, so <laughs> Sanya is all the way down in the, in the south of China. It's on, on the island just next to Vietnam. So it's like the tropical island of China. Yeah. A little bit, they call it like the Hawaii uh, of China. Hawaii of China <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yeah. That's one of the main destinations for um, Chinese people. If they want to go to the best possible beach in China, then they would go there, right? Yeah. If, I mean, but of course with the same amount of money, same budget, maybe you can go to Thailand. No, you, you can, can live like a king in Thailand because yeah. then Sanya is very expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were there in Sanya. Uh, so you resigned? Then you went to it wasn't Sanya, really a resignation job? because it was like an a tra internal transfer. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so because oh, it was from the like same for company? Marriott, yeah. So it was oh, within right. Marriott, same company, but then different hotel. 
So it was a Starwood first in Xi'an? Yeah, you Starwood. And then it was still Starwood when I moved to Sanya, uh -huh. but a different brand of Starwood. So in uh, Xi'an, I was working for uh, Sheraton, and then in Sanya, I was working for San Regis. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, right. But it's, so it's like the same company. Kind Sheraton of, right? and San Regis. Which one is better? Sounds to me San Regis. I no. mean, San Regis is a bit more luxury. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How much is the room? Per in night? Sanya? Yeah, in, in uh, San Regis, Sanya. Yeah, no, it's very expensive. Per night? I mean, if you go in the high season, like Chinese New Year and stuff, maybe it's like three, four, five thousand dollars. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, it, it's insane. San Regis, it's very Sanya. Crazy. Uh, it's very crazy. Okay. And then if you go in the off season, maybe it's like six, seven hundred to a thousand for like a standard room, right? Okay. But then, you know, yeah, it's expensive. on the the top is like endless, yeah. right? So what were you doing there? What was your position? So there I was working as a manager of a fine dining restaurant and two bars. And two bars. Yes. Yeah, so the so bar okay, so the, the visa was not an issue? They were not changed from... Uh, no, it was, okay. it was the I, same? I think once you're in China, process. yeah, once you're in China and you don't change a lot on, on your job, you know, like if you stay within the same area of your job, I think it's not very difficult to actually change. Uh -huh. So it's like a visa transfer. They don't actually have to apply for a new job and stuff. Yeah. So once you're in China and once you have a visa, it's not really difficult to change your job. Yeah. Unless you change like... The position the, sometimes. I mean, the pos uh, as, uh, if in you change case. the industry, maybe, let's say for us, mm. maybe we worked in hospitality and then we changed to education. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. can be like very tricky. Yeah, that's what happens actually to some of us yeah. later. <laughs> yeah. Later on the story. Yeah, but okay, if you're, so let's say, working in a school and you change a school or you work in a hotel and you change hotels, then it's, it's, it's fairly easy. Yeah. Okay, so you were there in uh, San Regis, Sanya. Sanya. For yeah. how long? Uh, a year. One year. Yeah, okay. I think it was like, 13 months, a year and okay, one month okay. or something like that. Yeah. One day and three hours. Yeah, and 17 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> okay, so you were there. And then how was it? I yeah, mean, how was, I mean, it was, which it was one do you nice. like better, Xi'an or Sanya? I think Xi'an is culturally more interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you can actually visit Shaman the Bing Bing Mayong, right? Bing Mayong, the Terracotta yeah. Warriors. And, you know, so Xinjiang is like, I mean, it's almost like on the border to like the deserts and stuff. So it, I mean, it's it's culturally very interesting. It, it has historically been like a very important city, yeah, and it's yeah, like yeah. a very Chinese city. It's not like Shanghai, which right. is a fairly like open and Western city. Yeah, Xi'an is really like kind of Chinese. Is that the same? If I remember correctly, is that the same when there's like some sort of a little buildings around the city? Yeah, yeah. It's, That's so the that, one, right? Yeah. So it's a city, and it's not a building, but it's like the wall, the defensive wall, like the wall. antique wall, yeah, or the ancient wall. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which was there for like hundreds of years. Oh yeah, because you can even right? rent some bikes, bicycle. <laughs> around, yeah, and yeah, then you go exactly. around. I did that. Yeah. yeah. You did that? Yeah, I did that. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> yeah, I right. went like 2000 and many years ago, maybe yeah. 2017, something so like that. So if there. you still remember, I was just living on the west gate of that wall. Oh yeah, maybe because yeah. it's quite uh, yeah. the west gate is kind known. of nice there. Yeah. 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 Oh okay, that's good. And then I remember when I went, I went from from Shanghai to. Or maybe Beijing, I forgot. But actually, you just take a bullet train, for example, now from Shanghai to Xi'an. How yeah. long it would take you? I don't really know about Xi'an, but if you go to Beijing, uh -huh. it's like five hours or something. Yeah, from Shanghai to Beijing, all the way north, it's like five hours in Which bullet train. Which is insane because it's and like... And it's quite good. The yeah. price is good. Uh, yeah, well, the prices are expensive, but... How much is that? Maybe four, five hundred? No, yeah, maybe six, seven. Okay, five, so six, maybe. To maybe in dollars, maybe six. No. In dollars, how much? Eighty dollars. I can see the is numbers. It? <laughs> <laughs> maybe eighty dollars. Right? Something okay. like that. Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah something, something like that. Like maybe. That. In yuan, we know it's around five hundred yuan, depending on what's the currency change. Yeah, so five hundred yuan is seventy-five dollars. You know, like many years ago when I arrived, the exchange of the yuan to Mexican peso it goes double. One yuan, one yuan, it will give you two pesos. Then, yeah, it used to. <laughs> and then maybe one, two years ago, one yuan will give you three pesos. Mexican and now? Pesos. So for me, for example, an exchange of salary. So for you, it's very nice. Yeah, then. for me, it was quite good because the salary was like <laughs> going through two, two yeah, thirds or yeah. three thirds. Or, I mean, not thirds, but two times or three yeah, times. You're... But now it's going uh, back down. So, so now it's how like much is 2. it? 2.5, 2.3. So you're earning less again? Than two years ago, yeah. but more than 10. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, you can always. I that. mean, you're still lucky because for me, it's like, it's horrible. Exchanging yeah. it to like Swiss francs. To Swiss francs. <laughs> because the Swiss franc has been like so strong in the last few years. Oh, so yeah, when I, course. so usually when I exchange, like in the last few years, I exchange it as like one Swiss franc 
is like 6.4 RMB maybe. 6.4 Oh, something like dollar. So, so obviously if you work abroad or if you're planning, that's gonna kind of affect. Yeah, especially need to, need to consider like the currencies and um, like where you're working, right? Like if you compare to Switzerland or you compare someone else coming from different places, probably, for example, the regular salary in Switzerland, yeah. maybe it's not comparable yeah, to a regular course. salary in, in China. In China, of course. But Especially in Xi'an. The cost of living also cost is very living. different, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you were there in Sanya. Uh, you were working there for a year. So at this point, you already have some sort of experience living in China. You get to know the yeah. culture. What was one of the biggest shock that you have oh, when you arrived? Shock. shock like your last name. <laughs> <laughs> what well, was one of the biggest? I tell you, it's really difficult to say because... Because there were too many of no, them. No, yeah, first of all that. And second of all, if you okay. go to China, you kind of get ready for for the worst. Taking it, yeah. At, at that time, I mean, yeah, you didn't yeah, really yeah. know anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're like, well, I'm going to China to live there. So your your mind is kind of ready for the worst. But and also little brackets. You were coming from the Swiss army, <laughs> right? You were saying? Yeah, yeah, they true, They kind of like prepare you for the for tough times. <laughs> no, you were yeah, maybe. Before. So that helped probably, uh -huh. right? Okay, you're in the right <laughs> mindset to yeah, take whatever yeah, yeah, it comes, exactly, it comes. Exactly. Okay, so you arrived to China and then? I mean, generally it was okay. I mean, of course, there are some like maybe things that you don't like or that you're not used to or some food that maybe that you're not so used to. But generally, it wasn't really a big shock. Like, even until now... You say it wasn't or...? It, no, it was not. It was not. Was that I think it was like a, in, in Asia, in China? No, yeah, in China, yeah, but not in Asia. Mm, so I've been to what? like Thailand already, before to China, Indonesia, yeah. before that. Okay, okay. Bali, Indonesia, like this. Uh, so there was not like a big shock? That it was like... Wow, a, look at that. Yeah, I know that sounds like very disappointing to talk about here, but it wasn't like a very big shock. Yeah, no, like I mean, definitely, because it, it's good to know, because probably some people, they feel like, and you know, we've been living here for many time, many years already, yeah. and then sometimes I, I see things that maybe they don't, don't. Uh, you know, caught my attention that often. Yeah, that's some people that comes thing, in yeah. the tourists, right? Yeah. Uh, but, but in your case, maybe, for example, if you're traveling before in, within Asia, like Thailand or Indonesia or something like that, yeah. then you don't have such a big shock. In my case... And it has also to do with, I think, expectations, yeah. like with what mind you come to, to, to another place, right? I mean, for here, of course, like what's a huge difference is, let's say, the people, let's say, between Mexico or Switzerland and the people in China and like this. Obviously, there's like a cultural difference, but if you're okay kind of to deal with it, I don't think it's yeah, a big yeah, problem, yeah. right? Also, a little bit to do with your experiences be Prior be before that, that point, right? because, for yeah. example, I was going to say, like, in my case before China, so I also... Or but you even have, lived in Vietnam. Yeah, that's the point. Have, yeah. I also didn't have like a big shock because I was living yeah, for in yeah. Vietnam. Yeah, exactly. So actually when I was there working in Hanoi, I was working for a year and living in Hanoi. So that was a little bit my yeah. first time in yeah. Asia, a little bit of a bigger shocks that I had there. And then when I came to China, it was more it was like, kind of oh yeah, already, okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, like, I think that's a good point, right? Uh -huh. So as an example, if you're from the States or if you're from Europe and you've never traveled out of, let's say, the US or you never traveled uh -huh. out of Mexico and then you come to China, you're, you're probably going to be like, yeah, you can't believe amazed. what's happening, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everything like, <laughs> Everything is either Chinese terrible characters. or fantastic or They're weird real. or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you've traveled if you a little bit, and, then yeah, probably not you're much. You're going to be totally okay. Especially if you've been in Asia before, probably it's not. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, so it depends also where you go, you know, mm -hmm. I have to say like, it depends where you go or where you live within China. As example, now we live in Shanghai. I mean, no problem. Yeah, I mean, everybody can live yeah, yeah. here. It's really no problem. There's everything. I mean, there's everything, everything. around. Everything. I mean, we're drinking like imported beers and we're having <laughs> yeah. like burgers just now and a pizza. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's like no that. problem really. And people are behaving good. You can see yeah. behind us, right? It's clean and everything. Yeah. Except for the wires you mentioned earlier. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> generally, no, I mean, it's, it's no problem. Like very international. Here in Shanghai, we have like maybe more than 10 Mexican restaurants. <laughs> Um, and two or three Swiss. I also, know. two or yeah, three? Oh, yeah, Swiss, or just yeah. the buttery, the Swiss buttery. No, well, that's not a restaurant, but that's a, actually a Swiss buttery that is like 
importing meat and stuff, yeah. right? And making like Swiss sausages. The thing is like there are many so. little mini bubbles within the Shanghai yeah. community, yeah. right? Yeah. Even nowadays, yeah. even though a lot of people left already, right? Yeah, During exactly. COVID, yeah. a lot of people left, but still it's... Please don't say that word. Oh, no, no. <laughs> during the... <laughs> a lot exactly. of uh, people left. During the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, during COVID, it was a little bit tough because many of our friends actually, they get to go. And, uh, you know, many restaurants, they were still paying the rent, which was very expensive. Yeah, but without crazy. having it open, there was some sort of uh, subsidies, I think, for some commercial yeah. buildings. For com yeah, but I don't know exactly. I mean, I would be over asked, like, how it exactly works. Yeah. Because yeah. there are different, like, uh, maybe regulations or policies in different areas within Shanghai on which government pays where, how much, and stuff. For sure, is that a lot of those restaurants they struggled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so okay. So at this point, you were in Xi'an, then you were in uh, Hainan. Yeah. You were there for uh, a year, thirteen months. Yeah, you yeah. Say. And then what do you do? Yeah, and then afterwards, again, I had an internal transfer going to Shanghai. Oh, within the same. Yeah, Mario. within Marriott, within, within Mario. Starwood. It within was still Starwood, Starwood okay, at that okay. time. So within Starwood again. So you move where? To, to Shanghai. To Shanghai. Yeah. Okay. From uh, from Sanya. From Sanya to Shanghai. To Shanghai yeah. Which hotel in Shanghai? Uh, it was the old San Regis in Pudong. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Again, San Regis. Yeah. It was the same. Yeah. San Regis, San Regis. Yeah. Now it's not a San Regis anymore because they built a new one in uh, Puxi, I think. Okay. So so they they rebranded it. But okay. that was old. Again, probably the change of a visa maybe was smooth, smooth because there didn't no even no, whatever, nothing. Yeah. Okay. And usually, mo if you're interested to work here, usually the HR that wants to hire you, they will take care of everything. So you don't really need to bother too much with any visa applications yeah. or work permits or stuff. Did they give you options to move to different provinces or you asked Shanghai? Yeah, I asked Shanghai. Oh, yeah? Because I thought it would be good like to go to like a decent city. Actually, because it's good after that you... Sanya and, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, it's good the way you did because it's Xi'an, Sanya, Shanghai. Yeah, yeah. If you'd have started yeah. the other way around, no, then, no, then, then like, you're gonna oh have a God, culture shock with yeah. China. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's good. So that was good. So and you then, were there in uh, San Regis, Shanghai, Shanghai for how long? Yeah. Uh, again, like uh, roughly a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably okay, about like a year. year. What was your position there? A restaurant manager. Restaurant manager. Yeah, exactly. It was oh. like a re Italian restaurant. Okay. And then I was Climbing up the ladders of the managerial so stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Not that much. Okay, but. so that's good. So, mm. so you enjoy Shanghai? Was a big difference yeah, between no, these so. cities like Xi'an? I mean, it was Hainan a huge change from Sanya to Shanghai, obviously. Yeah. Because yeah. so Sanya is like a tropical small. I haven't been to, but I've heard it's it's good. It's nice. I mean, I think it's nice like to travel there, but maybe it's not that fantastic to work there. Like a lot of like tourist destinations right, would right, be right. right. Yeah. If you go to Maldives to yeah, yeah. for holidays, fantastic. For but sure. then to work there, maybe it's not. I was working some months in Cancun, and everyone would say, "Oh, Cancun, Cancun." Yeah, Cancun. Yeah, yeah. But then, but then you still, still enjoyed here. working there, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I still enjoyed <laughs> because it was like also a few months during my university uh, right. days. Yeah. <laughs> so it was nice, yeah, we had a, a good fun little there. parties there. Little yeah. parties going on. Hey, so, okay, so you were there in uh, <laughs> San Regis, Shanghai, uh, one Sorry. more year. Yeah. How was, how was life at the time? I mean, you, you liked yeah, it, you enjoyed yeah, it, was it. Good, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed Shanghai. That's why I'm still here because Shanghai is just like a nice city and you can do a lot of stuff. And I mean, it's interesting, right? Hey, so from your view, for example, from um, uh, I mean, if you were to compare different variables, like some people, they say like uh, China with Mexico in my case, or China with Spain in, uh, in the case of a friend, or China with Switzerland, like the lifestyle, um, mm. the, the standard of the way of living, uh, what would you say like pros and cons? If you be living now back in Switzerland, how do you think would be uh, as, as hectic as <coughs> China or... I you think, see yourself going yeah. back. <laughs> what yeah, maybe. Yeah. I think like maybe your lifestyle, because like, I mean, China has changed a lot since beep, right? <laughs> COVID. <laughs> uh -huh. And uh, I think now your lifestyle maybe in Switzerland or going back to Europe or Mexico, maybe you would actually have a nicer lifestyle than at the moment. I, I'm kind of hoping that, that China oh, kind of right, recovers right. more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that like there, there are more like, like foreigners coming back and yeah. it gets like more international again and stuff. Because it hasn't really 100% recovered, I yeah. feel. I don't, obviously don't have the statistics. No, they whatever, haven't. I mean, but it just feels like it hasn't yeah, really. They're opening recovered. up uh, visas for uh, a lot of countries with no visa, actually. Yeah, so that says a lot, right? Yeah. For China, opening up visa free says a lot. So yeah. people don't really want to come come here anymore. Yeah. I guess, yeah. which is a pity, right? I'm having a friend coming in September, Chucho. 
Oh, <laughs> nice. He's coming from his little honeymoon <laughs> with um, with Jessica. And uh, yeah, so it's good because now, uh, yeah, so finally. Where's the honeymoon? Uh, well, they're going to actually Xi'an. Oh my God, they're yeah. going for a honeymoon going to eight, Yeah, so they're coming to, well, they're <laughs> nice. arriving first in Hong Kong. Uh -huh. uh, then they're going to Beijing, then Xi'an, then Shanghai. Ah, so we're so going to be doing a little tour. Two Are you going to travel with them? Two weeks. Maybe at least in one spot. You can. Yeah. Uh, so when you go and ask for a visa to travel to China, depending on where you're from, they're going to give you uh, issue the visa, right? I think for Mexico. You have visa free for Mexico? No. Oh, no. That's we need to go to the embassy yeah. for Mexicans. Apply. You need to. Okay, so because you cannot uh, uh, make a reservation. You don't need to. How do you say that? You need to book uh, an yeah, appointment. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. don't have to. No, you don't have ah, to. What okay, you okay. do is you just go, go, there, go in, in line. line. Yeah, but people is lining <laughs> up from like two in the morning. Oh my. Three in the morning. So then it's much the better if you have to make a booking, bro. In a way, but then you will never find it. So you know, at least you know, like if you really want it, you can go next day in the night and people is camping <laughs> there. You know, really, since like one in the morning, two in the morning. And then, because they only come and they, they give like 150 spots, like little pieces for the first per 150 day. people per day. And yeah. then the rest go home. And then the rest go home. Try tomorrow. Oh my God. <laughs> so, so imagine uh, you go there instead of 2.30 in the morning, you go at 3 and then you don't get your ticket. Yeah, so next day you just try 1.30. <laughs> but uh, they're agents that you can have. That's what's happening now ah, right, in the right, right. They just wait there for you and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can do that. So how much does that cost? The visa? No, the like agent? the agent? I don't know. I'm going to be looking into it soon. Because, yeah, I'm going to put them in, in, in touch with uh, some friends. And maybe, yeah. So <laughs> I, I'm going to see uh, what's the process of the agency. Because normally it's not, it's not difficult. I mean, I've done it a couple uh -huh, of times. Uh -huh. So it's not difficult at all, but sometimes, you know, it, it helps the procedures. Also, you need to go to the embassy in Mexico City. Some people is not from Mexico, I'm from Puebla, blah, blah, blah. So it yeah. takes a little bit of things. From Switzerland, you still need We're to apply. visa-free now. Visa-free? Yeah. How many days? It's, it's crazy because my brother just came to visit me like a month ago, a bit less than a month, maybe. And then he still had to go through the visa process, everything. He, he paid like three, four hundred dollars to get the visa. Three, four hundred dollars? Yeah. <laughs> for paying then, the, the visa? Yeah. I mean, How that's come? what he said, I don't know. Maybe maybe he he got like a very, uh, like, emergency visa or something. I don't know exactly. He said it was very expensive, $300, wow. $400. And then, so he was here for like a week. He went also to Hong Kong and then Shanghai for a week. And then he left. And like two days after he left, they announced that it's visa free. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay, good. So he was a bit ups not upset, but he was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. I just paid like $300 and then two days later, uh, visa free. Yeah, so yeah, that's good. Like, I mean, at least like now they're opening up uh, yeah, for different so countries to come and visit. Yeah. Anyway, that's good. So, do, okay, yeah. so, so then, okay, so then after the San Regis Shanghai, you changed jobs. Yeah, so that's where we met then, right? La Roche? Yeah. You so, were not going to say the name of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keep so we met there in the Swiss Hospitality Hotel. Management School. Yeah. Actually, La Roche, they have branches where? Well, they have the main branch in Switzerland. Switzerland. And then they have one in Marbella. Marbella. Shanghai. Spain, Shanghai. And then they used to have one in, in Chicago, I think. Yeah. And they yeah, used yeah. to have one in Dubai. I just asked now in the event, alumni event. So they say they're opening up now the one in, in, Abu, in Dhabi. Abu Dhabi. Yeah, in so Abu that's, Dhabi. that's also kind of in plan. It's not open yet, right? Uh, I think it's just signed. They just signed. No. But it's under the Summit Education Program, whatever it is. Oh, is yeah. it? But, yeah, so this is a hospitality management school and then they have in different places. So that's where we met. Yeah. So you were there for... Um, two, eight five, years or something. No, eight years, no. I was five or six. No. Come on, 2016 years. until now. And, well... Uh, which is eight years. I'm out. So you left earlier than yeah, me. Yeah, I left 2021. Oh, wait. Eight, seven years maybe. Me, I did five and a half. I know, you can when check you my leave? contract. 2021. Can I see the contract? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because in my 2021? case... 2021? I left 2023. Nah. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe, maybe. Because I moved from uh, <laughs> La Roche, Switzerland. I moved to the oh, Australian. Because, no, Australian no, no. Australian Chechen. Yeah, because you worked in Chen Daohu first. Yeah, Chen Daohu. That's the Chechen. And then I resigned right. that one, and then I came oh. to Shanghai, and then I got stuck into the COVID era of 2022. <laughs> in Shanghai. Right in Shanghai. And then I missed, I lost one semester of work. So because I was in between work, I resigned one, and then I was working with the other visa now. But then they would say, yeah, just come, 
but I couldn't because I was, <laughs> because locked, I was locked down. I was locked down. So that was crazy because you literally, I mean, the streets were literally barricaded. Yeah. So even if you had to go, I mean, yeah, that, that I mean, whatever, you just couldn't do anything. Yeah, yeah, actually tough times for some people. Like if you will get sick at that time, <laughs> they, they will take you to the to the central park. Okay, so just station. talking about without naming, saying names. Uh -huh. But one of our good friends, his cool. wife was pregnant. <laughs> cool. Yeah, without saying names, right? <laughs> was his pregnant. wife was pregnant. Okay. Because, uh, uh, privacy, because COVID. <laughs> privacy matters. We won't name any names. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. So he, she, was mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> she was like, she was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Pregnant. Can't she wait. gave birth during COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and like, she's happen. Russian, right? Oh, oh, too much information. <laughs> no. And then. <laughs> Yeah, it was like a drama because like she she was she had to like fight to go to the hospital for yeah. birth. Right? At that time, you needed to <laughs> to go out, and also you know like remember that the the language is a little bit of a barrier, right? So if you don't communicate perfectly what you want to say, they're just gonna be saying, oh, this per this person foreigner, they just wanna go out, and then no, I mean it's actually important. <laughs> I'm giving birth. Yeah, and they're like no. Yeah, exactly. I know what so, you're gonna say, right? I mean, it was a little bit tough. So. Which brings the next question. Oh, very serious. <laughs> so in terms of communication, you know, like when you have some sort of a troubles and stuff, how is the, um, how's your Chinese going? No, I'm not going to speak Chinese. I'm going to speak Chinese. Yes, I'm going to speak Chinese. Yes, I'm going to speak Chinese. Cheers. 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 We're going to speak Chinese. You're going to speak HSKR? No, I'm not. Ah, uh, we you nigga H S. What we say? We H S K San, sure. Ah, chop do we say R S San? Okay, we're gonna cut that out because it's very embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> because we're very bad at Chinese. Yeah. yeah. So that's the one thing that maybe. I mean, but comparable to yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of other yeah, foreigners yeah, maybe yeah, are okay, yeah, but yeah. still. I mean, that's the thing. Like, and I, it, it applies like for every country or culture. Like, you need to learn the language. I mean, like much better than actually we do. Like, uh, uh, the more you can talk, obviously, the, the easier your life is here in China and the more, like, comfortable everything gets. For us, still, like, living here sometimes is a struggle because we're just not good enough in Chinese. Yeah, you know, you just, like, try to say and then they take, like, I mean, fun or whatever. It's good. So, yeah, it's, I mean, and, and also it's one of these languages that you cannot just pick it up as easy as other languages in the, in the street. So yeah. you kind of like need to study. Yesterday I was talking to Max, my oh. friend, the uh, Mexican. Mm -hmm. He was saying that one of his or one of his habits is that um, is that he's studying every day uh, Chinese uh, for the How last long? maybe four, four or five years. Actually, he speaks. He's like maybe HSK, maybe five. Oh, maybe four, so five. then he's good. He's, I mean, yeah. he's like no problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there's no problem. But he also feels like you know, like ah, I still trying, still trying. I mean, you can also learn a bit more. Yeah, right? there's never like uh, you cannot cap the. The, so the does he make kid. his videos in Chinese? He could, yeah, he ah, could, yeah, he yeah, could, yeah. Good. There's some videos that he uploads and it's in is in Chinese, full on. Yeah, it's that's good. I mean, quite good, good right? Like that's new habits good. that people get when you're here. So yeah, that's the thing. What's I mean, your new habit? Having a beer with my uh, <laughs> friend making YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, something that you learn that you actually like of people day to day ritual or yeah. behaviors in China. I mean, it's all just a habit, right? Like what? You just need to get into it. Like yeah. studying Chinese. Study Chinese. We're just not doing it because but we're something lazy. you've done? Not really. Not as a habit, but something you changed in your own since you've been in China or not? No, not really. Not really, right? You? You know no. what I was, uh, when we had COVID the first time, because oh. they stopped, they stopped, and when we were in the La Roche, we used to go to work, right, every day, but then they changed the classes to online. Uh -huh. So we couldn't go to, to school, so we were just teaching online every day. So I was like, okay, so what am I gonna do? So what I did is uh, I bought in Taobao, this calendar. I think I told you. Then I just put in, the, the, in, in the, my wall the calendar, and then I was just trying to say, okay, at least a day, I want to read at least two hours or one hour. Oh, yeah, book. that's good, that's good. Yeah, so that's per good. day, uh, I was just like checking. But two hours like a day is, well, because we had nothing else to do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I at mean, least you do something. Well, you did I your know. doctorate during COVID, so that was yeah, a good actually, thing to do, actually, right? Actually, yeah, exactly. So because I, I would mean, just feel was like, great. I was just, I just feeling like um, there was so much time and I was like, okay, so what can we do? So I was doing yeah. these little habits every day in the morning, like, okay, nah, reading, that's the maybe at least two hours. And you know, like, that was really enough. important during that COVID time, because we were really just like at home every day, at home, at home, you couldn't go out. And then I have a dog, so we were like secretly sneaking out to l at least Linda? let the dog walk, lady. Ah, uh, lady, lady. Yeah, to let the do dog walk a little bit. So having a little bit of structure was like really important at that time. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, otherwise it's all free. 
free rage. Like, you just get lazy yeah. and like do nothing anymore. It could be so comfortable, you're just right? Rotten, rotten at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's why I mean, at least we took advantage. You also started your congratulations. Your PhD. Yeah, doc, uh, not a PhD, but an EDD. Uh, EDD, yeah, doc, it's Doctor yeah. in Education. Education. Yeah. So actually, yeah, that's what we started. So we met there in the hospitality yeah. management school. We were there for some years and then we changed. So I moved works. Where do you go? Well, me too, no? After La Roche, where, where did you go? Well, I went to uh, like Shanghainese uh, University here, which has a cooperation with uh, some British schools. British so school, it's a, yeah. yeah. It's a University of... Uh, University of Shanghai for Science and Technology, USST. Uh -huh. And so they have a cooperation with some of the uh, British universities, with yeah. nine British universities. Oh, with nine. Yeah. yeah, that's interesting because when I was in Beijing, I used to be teaching the Singaporean program as well, and oh. they have cooperation with two universities, Coventry and Sunderland from the UK. Oh, yeah, for good. some reason, um, uh, students at some like high school or in some college level in university, they, they have some sort of a joint ventures with the UK universities, right? Yeah, because then they get some UK degrees afterwards, yeah. right? So, so that's very great. good, of yeah, course. It's great. Yeah. It's great and for they study it in English and... Yeah, 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 yeah. It's very good. Yeah, because they still stay in China, but then they have a degree from the UK yeah. and then they have access to people in the UK, the, all the information is like this. So yeah. it's quite good. Okay, so you're there yeah. now. So now just uh, working a little bit. Yeah. So Looking forward to summer holidays. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting because um, you changed actually all of your career from Marriott, Marius and Regis, all of the yeah, background from hospitality. hospitality. Now you changed to education. Yeah. I mean, first hospitality, then hospitality education, and then now. And then education, education, yeah, that's right. a good transition. So, how do you see that transition? You, you like it? It's good? Yeah. Then you enjoy? The best ever. Yeah, right? I mean, okay, that's, that's very aggressive to say. But, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just ever. very different. No, but it is like. Yeah, it's then. just very different, right? Hospitality is like very. It's, I mean, it's super good. It's nice. It's still my passion. I still like it, but it's tough. So, I think giving some or like being involved in the education of hospitality is very valuable obviously i don't know how many of you watching maybe are are working in hospitality i've worked in hospitality for 10 12 years it's just very tough and it's important yeah, yeah, that yeah. you know there some we can actually educate future managers of being able to manage those processes yeah, exactly. better I because know. it's not a problem of hospitality itself it's just a problem of how we manage it right yeah so being able maybe to educate future managers down the road somewhere and giving yeah. them some better insights could be very valuable for everybody working in that industry, right? And many of the students of La Roche, actually, they are like a very high positions in different... Yeah, uh, many of them, right, of hotels. course. Even yeah. in Mexico, I remember. Yeah, yeah, of Like, course. yeah. Okay, so... so you have like a great influence on, on, yeah. on maybe the future of hospitality, right? Yeah, I, I like that as well. I like that. So how many hours do you remember you used to work when you were in, uh, in operations? You remember a number? No, endless. Yeah, really. <laughs> no, I mean, no, I told you, I, I, endless. I said, <laughs> no, I mean, no, regular yeah. days would be like to ten, yeah, not twelve, eleven, twelve hours, regular ones. And then if there would be like New Year and stuff, you just wouldn't go home. Right? Yeah, yeah. You would yeah. just be working like twenty hours. And here in China. Is it the same comparable working hours with operations? Let's say in the same industry, right? Yeah. You work in a hotel in China and then you work in a hotel in Switzerland. Yeah. Mm. What's the difference in terms of hours? I would say Switzerland is much tougher. Really? Than, than China because in China, you, most hotels or at least the good hotels that, uh -huh. that let's say most of you guys would work for if you come here wouldn't have that much of a of a pressure from like labor cost so a lot of hotels here are like what we would call overstaffed uh -huh. for like european or american standards so everybody can work a little bit less probably mm -hmm. but let's say in switzerland labor is so expensive that like there is this really high pressure on performance for most of the for most of the people working in hospitality yeah because there's just nobody else to do stuff to do yeah. the work right yeah so in switzerland i would work much more than than in china yeah wow because here also like they also. have this some sort of a uh, what is it called it's like a saying that you work in china 966 no but that's more like for the tech yeah yeah but that's more for the tech yeah. industry i think yeah like it, i maybe. think tech industry here in china is very tough or used to be very tough i think they changed some regulations and stuff but yeah. it used to be like, uh, what is it, 
from nine in the morning to nine in the night, Be oh, six you know, days I a week. I just remember right? now because uh, at the university that I'm working, there's a professor that he just wrote a book. And the title of his book, it it's was nine, nine to day. five. Oh. Nine to five. That and then nice. when he came and then he prepared, I mean, he preferred when he, uh, we just have a, like a meeting there. Uh, so I'm working in the entrepreneurial hub in one of the universities, right? Mm -hmm. So he came to say, look, uh, I just published this book and stuff. And then the Chinese people, they say, why do you write nine to five? It was nine to six. And they're like, <laughs> oh, what, really? And he's like, yeah. And everyone kind of like agree. Uh, yeah, it's nine to six. Why nine to five? <laughs> so I was like, I think he then wanted to change the title. So I was like, but oh, he published it, it already. Yeah, yeah, it's it's gone. I mean, finished. He said, "Oh, my next book, blah blah, whatever, like little jokes." But then they said, like, supposed to be like maybe nine to six, nine to six, and they were like, "Okay, like normally for specific jobs, maybe you get to work many more hours than in other places in terms of efficiency or something like that." Because if we look at numbers, for example, of different countries, like the Germans, they work how many hours per week? The Swiss, they work how many hours per day? The Mexicans, how many hours per week? And then I think the Nor the Nordic countries. They work the least? No, I think they the French work also the don't less. work much, yeah. right? <laughs> the French, right? Sorry. Right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the least. Is the Nordic one? In Swiss, in, in, no, in Swedish. In, uh, Sweden? Sweden, sorry. Swedish people, yeah. In Sweden, they I think work it's, it's uh, the ones that they hours? work more efficiently, let's say. Hey, so that's the thing, right? Uh, let's say in Switzerland. Maybe 30 something. 30 something. Because there's like a big shift in like, the way or the way we think about working let's, in most yeah, like yeah. let's say European countries is not that you need to work like a lot of hours I mean still a lot of people have to obviously yeah but I mean a lot has to do with efficiency right yeah yeah, yeah. and how efficient you work and then yeah. here just a lot of things are not being done very efficiently yeah so that's why people spend a lot of time actually at work or the, also like a bit maybe also what happens in Japan right is that people just have to stay there as long as the boss stays there and then the boss feels like he needs to stay there because still everyone yeah, is there and yeah, yeah, exactly. it's like a circle of everyone needs to stay because everyone's still there. Same with, same with Korean uh, culture. Yeah, Korea, Japan. Like right, they say, hey, let's exactly. go to the KTV after and everyone needs to go to the KTV. Yeah, and then it's like work <laughs> time in KTV. Guys, like we work tomorrow, yeah, but the boss is here so we, yeah, cannot, we cannot go home early. And he's telling us, cheers, cheers, and so you need to drink yeah, the little. Terrible. Bai chow, bai chow, or whatever it is, the Korean. Oh no, soju. Soju, yeah, soju. yeah. Yeah, so it's good, like different, you know, interesting cultures, like yeah, uh, culture, Asian stuff. Cultures, yeah, yeah. So, is there anything that, um, you know, like a misconception that you have of China? You thought something, and then when you came to China, it was different? Almost any city in Shanghai is like very well developed. There has been like so much money pumped into You know, like we have this conception of China, at least like when I came here that is like very underdeveloped and that there's like, you know, I don't know, like that everything is dirty and stuff like this. But then it's really, really not like that. Bright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really like well developed. Yeah. It's, it's better developed than most country, uh, most no, yeah, cities sure. in Europe, that maybe. They, they tell themselves that they're developed, right? So a developing country, as it's apparently like um, labeled China, Sometimes in many different rubrics, it's even much higher than developed countries. Yeah, I know, for sure, right? for sure. So, you, you, something that I can see in my case, for example, in terms of um, safety and security in the streets, like compared to China, so here is no problem. Unbelievable. It's really not an issue. Like phones can be there in the other table. And something I can like put that. my phone here. Yeah. Put your phone there. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's gonna take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody's gonna take it. I mean, it has happened I to could me. almost bet, I mean, Put it and then it's gonna be I the camera. Got, I have that camera. No, yeah. but really, really, like, there is just, I mean, the chance that you get like robbed or beaten or anything here is just. You can walk in the middle of the night through the creepiest alley and what, just. What do you think out. is that? Because of. Things scare? we cannot talk about. <laughs> <laughs> no, because there's obviously a certain amount of control happening here. Right? So. Okay, I in guess, a way, something that is a little bit of a unbi oh, a criticized for people that it's a lot of control, but mm -hmm. at the same time, in the other side of the coin, in a positive side, then it's bringing you this. I mean, the thing is that different, yeah, like you said, uh -huh. but like different cultures have like different understandings of what is important. Yeah. Let's say, if I know, like in Switzerland, like for us, it's very important, like to be free and do whatever we want and stuff, and that's fantastic. But then there's like a flip side to that, right? That things also get maybe, Switzerland maybe is not a good example for that, but 
I mean, some countries maybe they prefer freedom over safety or whatever, and that's totally fine. But then maybe Chinese culture would prefer to give up some of the freedom for safety. And there's not really anything yeah, inherently exactly. bad about it. It's just like different cultural preferences, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you like say, people here would say like, I don't care as long as it's safe in the night. I don't care if there's a camera, right? Yeah. And then that's okay for the people here. And why why bother with it, right? If if people actually want that. Yes, the positive side of things is much better than the negative yeah. things, like giving away a little bit of your privacy. I believe that's at least how 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 I see it as well. Even though you know, like. Um, we might have like ideas like cheers <laughs> sorry for it no. like ideas about like yeah but i don't want them to, to check my phone and stuff they're doing it everywhere anyways in every country the difference is like here is a little bit more acceptance or probably in other countries don't you think they're already looking into the information of people for sure no yeah just maybe a little bit more in different countries a bit less in different yeah. but generally i think it doesn't really matter I think what's the, the kind of the issue is that what's being done with the information that maybe they look at, how is that being utilized mm -hmm. afterwards, right? That could be maybe an issue. But I think we both don't like understand that much about it to really give. Yeah. Like we, we don't know what, let's say, the Swiss government does with information and the Chinese government yeah. really does with information. So, I mean, it's just like speculation. Yeah, anyway. true. Also, also take it with a grain of salt, because for example, let's say our, our um, how do you call it? our genre is in education. So maybe we don't have to deal too much with a, a specific work hours on industrial companies and stuff. So maybe in our case, like the way we do day to day, how we use it, we don't find like big issues. Yeah, right? exactly. But maybe I other think. people would have their own, like, yeah. no, of course, it's like this is something so. Yeah, I exactly. And it depends your personal like, like viewpoint of that, things. right? But okay, so that's one thing. So when you were there now in this school, you, you've been there working for two years, right? No, no. less than a year. Oh, really? So yeah, that's I why just, I just said yeah, that. 2023, just, I was still working in the Ah, I know. So, so Until July. I moved in 2021. So yeah, that's so the difference. Two years. Yeah, it's two years. I didn't know. Okay, so, you, so you're thinking maybe stay there for some time. You like it? Yeah, maybe. Let's see how things develop and how things work out and I can't say too much here in public. <laughs> no, no, but okay, okay. yeah, I mean, just to see. I'm okay. Usually I don't mind to work for a few years for a company. I have did like my fast jobs and fast changes like when I was young. Now I don't mind to work for a few years. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. Uh, in my case, I think, uh, you know, something that happens to many expats uh -huh. in China is that you say, okay, I'm going to stay maybe one more year, one more yeah, year, one more year. You get like stuck and then here, you right? notice it's been already 10 years. I came here to China the first time and I said, I'm just going to come half a year to do a little bit of experience and to learn a bit of Chinese and then I go back. Yeah, <laughs> now, 10 years later, we're having this interview, right? Yeah, yeah, because so everything to get stuck, kind of like keep making sense to stay one more year, you know? Like for example, even in my case, I've been looking for different options as well. And then when I compare the different variables of things that care for me or to me, then I still kind of like check boxes more in this side that if I compare it with another So what, what kind of things would you like? Uh, for example, for me, uh, style of uh, lifestyle, you know. But you could have a better lifestyle in Mexico maybe. Um, Maybe somewhere there, you know, like yeah. maybe somewhere there, like what we're having here. Also, I mean, the thing is also that let's say, uh -huh. maybe your salary here, let's say the lifestyle that you can have here, maybe would be better. Yeah, I mean, maybe it would be better because like you would actually maybe earn more here. Than, uh, I, mean, yeah. I don't want to go too much in detail, obviously, but like yeah, lifestyle yeah. obviously has to do with like how much income yeah. you have and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, so that would sure. obviously kind of matter. For sure. Yeah. And, and then I was also considering, right, like uh, last time, for example, last year when I was there in Mexico, uh, there are some options. But then yeah. still, when I try to put pros and cons from each one of the specific jobs here and this one here, then it's still, uh, not even slightly, but it's still like... Like China like, heavy. Right? Like still a little bit heavy. Yeah, and then I say, okay, even though there are many more variables here, for example, that I, I would like, you know, to go back, like friends and family and stuff. Yeah, that's all. But it's still somehow it, yeah. here, you're also developing your friends and, you know, yeah. different kinds of things. So Especially it's not after like... you live here 10 years. Yeah, right? so you it's not like you're around. making like a big uh, effort by staying in China, I mean, to kind of good, because it's also like many other variables. Um, uh, the only thing, of course, you. is as being an expat, but it's not really like China related. But it's yeah. just like family, that you're far away from family. 
and I think as you get older, you know, family becomes like more and more important. Yeah. Another, yeah. Another, you mentioned the the expat sphere. Yeah. Uh, just one more thing is like, um, what about the expat communities in China? Like, for example, I can tell you, and then you in the in the minute, like when you think about the communities, in, for example, in Mexico, we have here in the WeChat groups, right? Uh, yeah. Viva Mexico, Shanghai, uh, <laughs> Mexicanos yeah. and China, Mexicano. So there are many li different groups of uh, Mexicans uh -huh. living in, chi in China, <laughs> in Shanghai, course, in yeah. Hanzhou, uh, different yeah, places. Yeah, Beijing. That you kind of like Mexicanos get together, get close. Beijing. Yeah, Beijing as well. Yeah. Big, less than 500, but 400 and something. Same like the Swiss groups. Oh yeah? Yeah, we also have like the little WeChat groups. <laughs> like Swiss and Shanghai. What do you guys talk about? And fondue and... Uh, <laughs> and raclette. Horrible. <laughs> fondue Chocolate. and raclette. No, I mean, what do you talk about? Like... Uh, Just like general, like little tips, stuff to do maybe, little events, you know, like... As example, uh, the Swiss Chamber of Commerce also have like the Swiss ball, so people like invite there and... Small little like information and stuff. Okay. But as we Swiss are always very serious. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like they send instead of a message, they send a screenshot of the business card, no? <laughs> Please send me something like that. Okay, yeah. So that's something that good that I actually yeah. like here in, in China, in Shanghai, in Beijing, in big cities. I mean, the thing is that foreigners here stick together. Yeah. Because life sometimes is not so easy, maybe. You know, like banking is difficult and like anything administrative is difficult. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like some things obviously like it's still difficult, it's still difficult here. Yeah. So like, I think foreigners here tend to like stick together very, very yeah. strongly. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I, I get to travel with Pascal. We were together, right? Yeah, we went many places. 2018, we went to India. Wow, Sri that was Lanka. crazy. You have some stuff on your on on the channel. On yeah, India, yeah. Right? I think I have. You guys some. have to check I, it out. I have some. So we went together to India, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka Myanmar, Myanmar, Korea. Korea. With Dima as well? With Dima, he was And there. then I think that's it. That's it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Laos, no. No, no, no. no. I went on my Myanmar, own. Myanmar, yeah. And, uh, Myanmar is fantastic, I went on my own. right? Yeah. Myanmar was yeah. good. So that's India one thing. was also good. India uh, was, Sri Lanka. Was, was amazing. We were there like, for a month. Uh, we were in uh, in many different areas in India. Somebody Baranasi. got very sick. <laughs> well, at least I get sick in the pizza hut. And not in the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so that oh, yeah, so that's the thing. You just kind of yeah. get sick once. You just need to know, and then it's yeah. okay. They call it the the belly. What is it called? The new belly, belly. No, uh, the belly, 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 belly. belly, belly. <laughs> when you get the the moctez in Mexico, it's called the moctezuma. Something, but there's so much short out or something like that. Like the la dudza in Spanish. Yeah, the la dudza. La dudza. Okay, well, great. Uh, just one more thing. Um, any final recommendations that you would say to people that is now looking into coming to China? What should they check? Um, you know, like, what, what is, what steps should they take uh, in order to come to China? Uh, yeah, so first of all, uh -huh. just come. Okay. Because we have nothing <laughs> to lose. Right, just freaking easy. I mean, what's going to happen? You just come here, you like it, you stay. If you don't like it, you just go back home and that's it. You have nothing to lose, but you have a lot to gain, obviously. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Just like from an experience perspective, it's not even really related to China, right? But just get some experience yeah, and yeah, travel yeah. around a bit. And once you're in China, you can travel all of Asia so easily. So, I mean, just come here. And then I would say maybe, I think like the most important one thing that you have to do is like, like, from the first day to study Chinese. Study Chinese, yeah. Because that's like a mistake that we both did. Yeah, because we both way, kind of started to work. Yeah. Like I just came to China and then first day work, work, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I, I kind of like messed it up a bit with Chinese. I didn't like study very hard, very yeah. good. So now for 10 years already I'm struggling with it. So I recommend everyone just come here. I mean, you have two options. Just every day, like your friend does, study like an hour or two Chinese, take classes. It's super cheap, it, unless you're in Shanghai. But in <laughs> Xi'an, it's super cheap, as example. You can get like an hour of Chinese for no. like $10. Even if expensive, you need to do it. It's an you investment. You just need to freaking do it, yeah, right? yeah. It's an investment. Or, and then work and do that, or you just go like study for a half year first. I mean, it depends obviously on your age, but if you're a bit younger, and you can afford, like, you know, you have the time to afford yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Just go study for a year and then you start to work. Yeah, actually it's many- It's worth gold, it's worth much more than any salary you yeah, get within yeah. that year. Actually, many of the scholarships that they give sometimes to students coming to China is the first year, you come from zero. You don't even know 
to say ni hao, e r san, nothing, nothing, nothing. They come from zero. Then they learn one year until they reach the HSK four. Within after, a year. Within a year. And then when, yeah, yeah, wow. that's for scholarships. And I know uh, oh, they were giving this tough, for, for yeah, like yeah. China, like China studying this kind of stuff. Is yeah, yeah, tough. but you they are like push. four to six hours per day every day for one year. Nah, and then if you pass the HSK four after you one get year, another scholarship. then you then no, then you continue. It's the same scholarship, but then now it's not language. And you continue oh, with yeah, the actual yeah. degree. So that will be then the you study your bachelor or something. Yeah, that's yeah, like exactly. the introduction to your bachelor's. Yeah. But how does it work only if it's like a language program? Are there scholarships oh, so for that? Uh, yeah. Only like just for a year of language? Yeah, so whatever is the um, the bachelor's that you're going to be taking, for example, if it's like... But what is like, let's say, if, not like for a bachelor, but if like we wanted to go study now, would there be scholarships for that? Nah, let's say because well, some people maybe they're already like maybe 20, they don't really want to, yeah. they already study, they just want to maybe work here. I mean, you can check, but for example, I know in the Jiangsu province, where I'm now like officially located, <laughs> there are many scholarships uh, under 35 oh. years old, under 30 years old, so I could still something like this, it. yeah, yeah. So there's some, there's some, uh, there, there are many, many things, you know. So how will that work? Coming up. Like, do you know how the scholarships work? Uh, do you get like money, or they just pay your tuition, or do you get like money also to live, or how does it work? Oh, yeah, yes, yeah, so, well, I forgot it's been some years ago, but I remember like they were giving a uh, small allowance. I think it was like two, three thousand yuan per month. No, I mean, you can student two, right? three thousand yuan. You can, you're not going to go like fancy, but yeah, you can yeah, live yeah. on it. And then they will give you accommodation within the university share. So free course. accommodation. Yeah. plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's fine. You and then fine. you just need to keep your standards of, um, Study of standards. Uh, your, dig your grades. And then if you pass HSK 1, HSK 2, HSK 3, say continue, 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 and then after three years or whatever, then you have the, the degree of the bachelor's. That's oh, for bachelor's. You get like a ba but you can make like a degree in Chinese language or what? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, but that's there are two, there are two. Apparently, uh, <laughs> it depends because depending on your level of, of, of Chinese. Chinese. But I think, um, well, what I know is like some foreign students, they still need to have some Chinese, maybe HSK4, even if the classes are in English. Mm -hmm. uh, because in some public universities where they give the scholarships, maybe some teachers, they're going to be speaking in Chinese anyways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even if it's supposed to be delivered in, in English, English right? Yeah. But then they still stick to their Chinese because most of the students oh, are Chinese. Chinese so anyways. Why should they even care? Yeah. So that's one thing. <laughs> and, um, and another thing is like... Um, uh, yeah, so just have the, the levels of HSK. Normally, I think it goes from the HSK 1 to the HSK 6. Although, I, know, I know they changed it recently, yeah, right? Yeah, I think to so I don't, I'm not like. I I'm think the like 6 sure they divided it into, it into different. Uh, but I heard it's like a little more difficult now or something? I think it's like more difficult it. at the beginning and then at the end it becomes easier. Before it was like HSK 1, 2, 3 was like, I mean, yeah. One and two was super easy, and then three was okay, and then it started to get super difficult. Yeah. Do but you remember how many words? It was like HSK one was like 150 words. Yeah. Then HSK two 300. Double. And then it was like nine. No, no, it was like a thousand two hundred or something. It was double. 150. Three hundred. Six. Six hundred. Yeah. One thousand two hundred HSK four. So you can imagine, like, to reach HSK HSK three was like super easy. I mean, not super easy, but it was like <laughs> Very doable, easy. right? And then, but then to reach like HSK five or six was like, was yeah, almost nobody. Yeah, because it's exponential, it's like double, double, right? And also, so you have 150 words, HSK oh, one, so double, 53, six, 300, then six, double, 600, 12, double, 24, and then oh. double, 24. So that's what is exponentially oh. difficult. It's not just three more Yeah, that's the thing, right? And also from HSK <laughs> one and two, you have pinging. HSK 3, 4 and above, yeah, you, don't you have, have only yeah, the yeah. hands that, the characters. Okay, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's one thing uh, that you said correctly. Congratulations. You, yeah, <laughs> just to study Chinese because uh, it's oh, going to yeah, help yeah. you at some point anywhere. No, and like also so one more thing that I remember, uh, in the Mexican group of the WeChat. Hey, that before I'm, little I'm working, bracket, are you yeah? still studying your Chinese now? Yeah, every Thursday. Yeah. So I think one hour. soon you're going to be much better than me, maybe. Woman uh, kind of. <laughs> that yeah. means uh, we'll see soon. We'll see soon, okay. <laughs> um, what I was going to say, oh yeah, so I know there are many more job opportunities if you speak Chinese. Actually, I've seen those opportunities now in Mexico. They want, okay, we yeah, want someone that speaks Spanish sure. and Chinese. Maybe someone speaks like German, Swiss, Swiss German and Chinese. Yeah, that'd know, be but also then very that's valuable. Crazy, right? Of yeah, course. that'd be very valuable. Same, I mean, that's everywhere in the world. I mean, 
Yeah, once you speak Chinese now, that's, that's very valuable. Right? <laughs> that's gonna help anyways, anyhow, somehow, or whatever it is. Yeah, I guess so. Well, and with that said, I would like I would to say thank we'll you very this. much. A little oh yeah, day. that was uh, one beer finish time. That. Cheers, Thank mate. you for your time. Thank you very much for inviting. And see you guys next time. Um, maybe next time we sit together again, we'll talk about different topics. Whatever it great. is of the interest okay. of the people about China and everything. Yeah. Maybe let us know also in the Swiss, comment section. China. What, if, if you want to know something or if you have some questions or something, right? Then maybe in the next video we can cover yeah, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Let's do that. All, All right. right. Cheers, cool. mate. Thank Cheers, you. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Have a good time.